So, 101 Dalmatians. Roger Radcliffe was a musician. He lived in a little flat in London with Pongo, his Radcliffe. pet Dalmatian. Yeah. Cool. One day, Roger got married. His lovely new wife was called Anita, and she had a beautiful lady Dalmatian called Perdita. Soon, Perdita was expecting her first litter of puppies. Life seemed perfect until one day, an old friend of Anita's, Cruella de Vil, came to visit. Perdita and Pongo were frightened of her. Where are the puppies? Cruella demanded. They're not expected for another three weeks, Anita replied. You must let me know when they arrive. I just adore Dalmatian puppies. Their coats are so beautiful. And with that, Cruella swept out of the house in a flurry. Three weeks later, Perdita and Pongo became the proud parents of 15 puppies. Roger, Anita and the nanny, housekeeper, were delighted. Mm, but they have no spots on no them. No spots on them, have they? Mm, not yet. The babies are so cute. The very next day, Cruella returned. Fifteen puppies, she cried excitedly. I'll buy all of them. Oh, no, you won't, said Roger. They're not for sale. You fools, you'll be sorry, Cruella cried, storming out of the house. One night soon are after... Are you reading to Jasmine? Mm-hmm. Uh, Cruella's henchmen, Horace and Jasper Jasmine. Badal, lay in wait to dogna the puppies. Oh. They, they sat in their van and waited for Roger and Anita to take Perdita and Pongo for their evening walk. Once the coast was clear, the Badans forced their way into the house. When Nanny tried to stop them, the Badans locked her Can in a I broom see cupboard. The spotty, um, puppies are by the time Nanny managed to escape, the Badens were gone, and so were the puppies. The police immediately launched an investigation, but as the days went by, the puppies were still not found. At last, Pongo said to Perdita, The humans aren't getting anywhere, we'll have to find the puppies ourselves. Pongo decided to try the twilight bark. This was the quickest way for dogs to send and receive news across the, the country. That evening, when the two Dalmatians were taken for their walk, Pongo barked the alert. Three loud barks and a howl from the top of Primrose Hill. After a moment, an answering bark was heard. It's the Great Dane at Hampstead, Pongo said to Perdita. Oh, wait. And he barked out his message. Is there another page there? No? Danny the Great Dane was very surprised by the message. Fifteen Dalmatian, fifteen Dalmatian puppies have been stolen. He told the terrier friend, "The two, the humans haven't been able to find them, so it's up to us to send out an old dog alert with the twilight bark." Just can you sit down, please. Hey. Sit down, please. Yeah. No, I won't read any more otherwise. <laughs> Danny's big deep voice began to send the news all over London. Two mongrels heard the alert. One said, I think we should let, let the rest of the country know. And so, within the hour, word had spread north, south, east and west, all over England. Before too long, the twilight bark had reached an old sheepdog called Colonel, who lived on a farm. Colonel's friends, a horse named Captain and a cat named Tibbs, listened too. They were all very surprised to hear that 15 puppies had been stolen. That's funny, Tib said to Captain and Colonel. I heard puppies barking over at the old Deville house last night. But no one lives there now, said Colonel. We must go and see what's going on. So Colonel and Tibbs went quietly up to the house and peered through a broken window. Inside the house, Horace and Jasper Baden were eating supper and relaxing in front of television. All round the room there were puppies, not 15, nor even 50, but 99 of them. Let's see. Some. They've got spots on them, no? Oh, one, I'm going to count. One, two, three. This might take a while. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, tw
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. No, don't start again. There, there's these ones here. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, count lots of them first. Eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Right, I'm going to turn the Seventeen. <gasps> Colonel quickly returned to Captain's stable and loudly barked the good news. Within no time at all, the twilight bark sent the message all the way back to London that the puppies had been found. It finally reached the ears of Perdita and Pongo. They set off across. They set off across the snowy countryside as fast as they could to rescue their puppies. Meanwhile, yeah. Sergeant Tibbs was keeping watch on the house. Jessica, sit down and listen to the story. Okay. Otherwise, I won't read anymore. Okay. To Jasmine, he will. When he saw Cruella drive up to the front door, he went to the broken window to hear what was happening. Cruella was ordering the Badens to kill the puppies. I want their skin for fur coats, she cried. I'll be back. First thing in the morning. And with that warning hanging in the air, she turned and was gone. Awesome, I can see my skin. Tibbs was horrified. Fur coats from puppy skins. What a terrible thought. There wasn't a Why moment to lose. Friend? Stop it. No, no. Do you want me to read the story? Yes. Right. Stop it then. There wasn't a moment to lose. As soon as the Badens began watching television again, Tibbs crept through the broken window and whispered to the nearest puppy, Tell everyone they must Run. escape. Cruella is after your coats. When all the puppies had been alerted, Mommy. Tibbs yes. led them to a hiding place. One, two, three, Not four, again. five, six. Now, where? Oh, One, come on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Fifteen. That was seventeen. As soon as the badons discovered Aww. that the puppies had gone, they Two. searched all over the house Seven. and eventually found them cowering under the stairs. Tibbs was in front, ready to protect them from the bad ones. Jessica, sit down, please. Meanwhile, Colonel had met up with... Do you want me to read the story? Do you want me to read the story? You need to be quiet, then. Come on, sit next to me. Let's read the story together. Come. 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 Meanwhile, Colonel, Colonel had met up with Perdita and Pongo and led them to the, the ah. Deville house. They arrived just in the nick of time and quickly bounded into action. Perdita yeah, attacked, yeah. attacked Horace Baden, while Pongo tore at Jasper Baden's trousers. Oh, I can't read it. Under cover of the fight, Tibbs led the puppies out of the house to the safety of Captain's stable. Leaving the Badans in a heap on the floor, Perdita and Pongo dashed after the puppies. Are our fifteen all here? asked Perdita anxiously. You're fifteen and a few more, replied Captain. There are ninety-nine. Ninety-nine, said Pongo, astonished. Whatever did Cruella girl, want with ninety-nine puppies? Girl, girl, girl. Girl, girl, girl. Can I read? Mm. There was silence for a moment. Then one pu little puppy said, She was going to make fur coats out of us. <gasps> Can you imagine, Jessica? Imagine mm. making fur coats out of the doggies. Boy, boy. Like cutting their heads boy. off and like chopping all their skin off. Them. Perdita boy. and Pongo looked at each other in horror. They had never heard of anything so evil. We'll just have to take them all back to London with us, said Perdita. I'm sure Roger and Anita will look after them. 
Perdita, Pongo and the puppies set off back to London, leaving a trail of paw prints in the snow. Cruella, who had returned for the puppy's coat, quickly spotted the paw prints and the chase began. Eventually, after trudging across the cold countryside, Perdita and Pongo led the tired puppies to the shelter of a blacksmith's shop. Cruella and Abaddon's were still on their trail, determined to catch them. Suddenly, Pongo had an idea. Ooh, yeah! Pongo he made the puppies roll in some soot until they all looked like black Labradors. Black Labradors. Instead of black Dalmatians. Black Under the cover of their disguise, the puppies climbed into a van that was going to London. But falling snowflakes began to wash away the soot. <sighs> Cruella saw white patches appearing on the puppies' coats and realised that she had been tricked. After them, she shouted to the Baddens. Pongo just had time to leap, on the, leap on the, onto the bumper as the van sped off, with Cruella and the Baddens right behind. Cruella was determined to force the van off the road. But as she banged into the side of it, her car skidded out of control and hurtled down a steep hill into a snowdrift. I'm not finished with the page. <laughs> then the Baden's van crashed into the back of Cruella's car and they all ended up in a large pile of wreckage. Back in London and home at last, Roger, Anita and Nanny hugged the tired puppies. Then Nanny said, have you noticed that there seems to be a lot more of them? Roger started to count. 14, 62, 94, 63, and 65. 5 over there. That's 101 Dalmatians, counting Perdita and Pongo. Whatever are we going to do with them all, asked Anita. Why, oh, keep them, of course, said Roger. We'll buy a big house and have a Dalmatian plantation. And that's exactly what they did. Bye.